Hey, what's up everybody? Rich Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, I'm going to address a question I've been getting here on the channel quite a bit lately, and that's, is Raspberry Pi overrated for retro video game emulation? So we're going to talk about this a little bit, and I think now is the best time to talk about this, because we've been dealing with this massive chip shortage now for the last year and a half or so, which has caused the Raspberry Pi price points to go up a whole lot. So we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi 4 today in this video and specifically the 4 gigabyte RAM version. And the reason that I use this as my example is because the Raspberry Pi 4 is the most popular Raspberry Pi line that most people use for retro video game emulation and the 4 gigabyte RAM version is the ideal one to get. 4 gigabyte RAM gives you the maximum performance for the majority of your collections. 2 gigabyte RAM version is going to fall a little bit short. 8 gigabyte RAM is going to be a little bit over the top in all honesty. We don't actually use all of that 8 gigabytes to actually emulate games, but it also has some funky issues with certain collections as well. So 4 gigabyte RAM is always the ideal choice if you're going within the Raspberry Pi 4 model line. So if we go back prior to the shortage, you were able to get the four gigabyte RAM version for $55. Now that is just the single board computer. That's not accessories, uh, cooling fans, cooling fan cases, all that stuff that you likely want to have in addition to just the computer board. But $55 just for the computer board was a great deal in my opinion. We weren't able to match that price point anywhere with any products that had the massive community that surrounds Raspberry Pi. So in my opinion, I think that $55 was an extremely fair price. And at that price point, we would never be wondering whether Raspberry Pi was overrated for retro video game emulation or not. So we're gonna talk about the limitations that you have with the Raspberry Pi, because this is something that you definitely have to consider in order to even start to think about whether this is a product line that's overrated or not. So the limitations in performance for emulation within the Raspberry Pi model line is going to be N64, Dreamcast, and PSP. For the most part, everything prior to that is going to perform and emulate really well. I would say in most cases, 100% perfect, but N64, Dreamcast, and PSP are where you start to really push that uh, performance to the max and you start to get a lot of pushback. So now in addition to those three collections where you have a little bit of pushback and I'm going to dive into exactly what the experiences are like on those three, we have Sega Saturn that came out prior to all three of those collections but Sega Saturn is notoriously difficult to emulate games for and that particular collection does not run at all on a Raspberry Pi 4. Some games will fire up but you are not able to play them, it's not an enjoyable experience, it's not even at all a functional experience. So Sega Saturn is completely off the table with Raspberry Pi single board computers. So talking about the N64 Dreamcast and PSP collections, with these collections, it's very hit or miss. So N64, I would say that we're able to get into about 75% of our titles, but that doesn't mean that the performance is 100% smooth or perfect in any way. We're oftentimes going to see a lot of pixelation. We're going to see lags, delays. We're going to see audio cutouts. We're going to see screen tearing in some cases. And then, of course, there's some games that just will not boot up or load at all. Um, so some games do run pretty well. And, um, you know, we can get through them. But I wouldn't say that they're, uh, you know, certainly not a flawless experience. But in most cases, I find that they're not even a good experience. Now, Dreamcast, I would say it's probably around the same percentage, give or take a little. Uh, probably 70% of games will you'll be able to play, but you do see a lot of glitches, lags, delays, uh, and sometimes you can adjust settings to better the performance, but again, far from flawless there. PSP is even worse. PSP is obviously a much later collection, um, but PSP, I would say you're probably getting into about 45, 50% of your titles, and um, I would say about 100% of those are going to be less than ideal um, circumstances where the games are just really glitchy or laggy or they just look really terrible. So those are the limitations with the Raspberry Pi. And I don't mean to be negative about Raspberry Pi, but I, I intend to just give you guys my opinion on this because I've been asked this question. So I'm a huge fan of Raspberry Pi products. I want to get that out there so it doesn't sound like I'm just bashing this product line because I am a fan of Raspberry Pis. But now at this new price point, which is several times higher than what it used to be, we really have to think about whether this is overrated or not. And in my opinion, I think that Raspberry Pis are now overrated for retro video game emulation. So looking at the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte RAM version at that $155 price point, that's just for the single board computer. 
we're going to have to, of course, hope that we get it at that price point. I've seen it go for much higher than that. We're also going to need to have to budget for cooling fan, cooling fan case, um, micro to regular HDMI cable, a power supply cable, and then whatever accessories we want, controllers, all that stuff. In the end, we're likely going to be spending over $200, $225 would be um, you know, probably ideally closer to what we're going to be spending on that entire setup. So at that price point, we could go and get on eBay or locally an older desktop PC that's maybe five, six years old, but has specs that far exceed that of a Raspberry Pi. And we would be able to use that to get into PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, Nintendo Wii, Sega Saturn, of course, but we'd also get those collections where we're able to dive into them on Raspberry Pi but the performance isn't great. So N64, Dreamcast, and PSP. All of these collections, for the most part, are going to run extremely well on your average desktop PC that's maybe an i3, 5, or uh, 7, just to name a few options. And I find that ideally we want to be at that 2.8 to 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, that's going to be able to get us into all of those game collections pretty much flawlessly. So that far exceeds that of a Raspberry Pi 4 and also puts us under that price point that we would be paying for a Raspberry Pi 4. So the benefit of a Raspberry Pi 4 is the fact that it's a small PC. It's very small. It can go in an arcade one-up cabinet easily, although you could fit a um, full desktop PC in an arcade one-up cabinet as well, but it's going to be much bulkier within. Um, you're not going to want to mount that on like the walls or anything. You'd have to likely extend your cables down to the floor of the cabinet and just kind of sit it and secure it in place down there, but certainly doable. And again, at that much smaller price point, we could afford to do that and afford to make those uh, modifications or adjustments. So just something to think about, something to consider. It's something that I've thought about a lot lately. Luckily, I, I have a couple Raspberry Pis here. Uh, as well as the Raspberry Pi 400, which also recently became harder to find. And the price has gone up on that for a while. That one was kind of maintaining its price point. But now that has even gone up quite a bit too. Once people realized that you could get that product and have the same performance or maybe even better performance on it. So uh, luckily I was able though to get my Raspberry Pis earlier at that $55 price point. So it just depends what you're paying for. If you're paying that $155 and up, I think that it definitely is overrated and you can get better performance cheaper elsewhere. So that's my opinion on all of this. I'm by no means saying that my opinion is the only way to look at this. I'm open to a difference of opinion. So if you guys think differently than me, let me know in the comment section below. If you agree with me, let me know. And we'll talk about it. We'll uh, you know share our thoughts, and I think that's the cool thing about YouTube and having these comments. Um, you know, we don't have to fill the comment section with negativity all the time. We can bounce ideas off each other and learn from other people's difference of opinion and points of view. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up on the video for me. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.